Thanks, Sarah. Um, well, it is cold. Lots of people thinking about how they're going to be heating their mm -hmm. homes. And unfortunately, we know the prices are going to get higher. Yeah, it feels like they've gone up already. And we understand that uh, the pressure of heating our homes is set to go up even more. Ben's looking at the numbers for us this morning. Hi, Ben. Morning. Yeah, morning. At the moment, most people relatively cushioned by that price cap that was enforced. But there are warnings that when that is inevitably lifted in the new year, it could see our bills go up even more. So a pretty significant increase on the way. Thanks very much. Yeah, morning to you. That warning that gas bills could be doubling, uh, and it could be double what we were paying last winter by the time we get into the new year. And that's, of course, because energy prices have been rising for months now. Last year, a typical annual dual fuel bill was just over £1,000. But as we were saying, you might remember the price cap. That's the upper limit that providers can charge you for gas and electricity. Well, that went up by 12% in October. It meant 15 million people saw their, uh, their bill go up as a result. Now, a typical annual dual fuel bill is now around £1,200 a year. That's a record increase. And the bad news, uh, it probably won't end there. Ofgem is expected to raise the price cap again early next year. Now, we don't know what that will exactly mean for bills, but the charity National Energy Action, it's forecast a £550 increase to the dual fuel cap in April. So it would mean that gas prices will have doubled in just 18 months. Well, we spoke to Catherine from West Yorkshire, who says she now has to decide whether she can afford to turn her heating on or find other ways to stay warm. I very, very rarely put the heating on, to be honest. Um, I've got blankets, I use my hairdryer. So basically, I'll wrap myself up in a blanket and I'll use my hairdryer to warm me up. Um, I'm very, very funny about putting the heating on because I just, it just, even when it's on, my anxiety levels are so high and I'm constantly like timing it to be like, when can I turn it off? How quickly will it, you know, last? You know, everything like that. It's just a nightmare. So what is causing that massive hike in prices? Well, wholesale energy prices, that's what our suppliers pay for gas and electricity. They, as we said, have reached an all-time high. The wholesale gas price has gone up by 250% since January. Uh, energy providers have inevitably begun to pass those costs on to customers. Now, usually at this point, we would say the best way to find a better price is to shop around for a cheaper deal on a price comparison site. But there are very few deals around at the moment. Well, that in part is down to the fact that so many smaller energy firms have already gone bust this year. 20 firms have gone out of business with the collapse of Zog yesterday. So let's talk some more about this with the energy analyst, Ellen Fraser, who joins us now. Ellen, good morning to you. Um, we have seen those huge increases uh, in wholesale prices and now they are being passed on to customers. But we probably haven't seen the worst of it, have we? Because many people will be cushioned by that price cap. That's exactly right. So the price cap went up um, around about 12% on the, the beginning of October, as you mentioned. And, you know, wholesale prices actually have been significantly um, higher than, than the price cap actually reflects. Um, and that price cap actually cushions the, the, the consumers from that hike for now. And that's the challenge. It's, it's a temporary ease, if you like. But ultimately, suppliers are still paying that cost on the wholesale market. And that cost has to flush out somewhere. So exactly as you mentioned there, the expectation is that the prices are going to increase quite materially when we hit the 1st of April revision to the cap. Now, Ofgem are actually looking at the pricing mechanism of that at the moment. But um, you know, industry analysts expect that that's somewhere around 40% increase that we should expect to see in April. Yes, a huge increase if those bills do go up as forecast then. Um, so that's people who are you know, subject to that price cap. But let's talk about a lot of people who might have been a customer of one of these energy firms that's gone bust. They may have been on a cheap fixed deal. They've automatically been moved to a new provider. They've already seen a big increase. They will have done. Quite often the suppliers, the, the smaller suppliers in the market, were actually trying to grow market share by offering prices that were below the price cap. Now, unfortunately, in, in a market where the wholesale price is so high, those prices were unfortunately unsustainable for many of them, and those suppliers it, it couldn't afford to continue and, and went bust. Now, when those suppliers um, are appointed a, a, a replacement through what's called the, the off-gem supplier of last resort, all of those customers then will be migrated from that failed customer onto a, a, a new um, supplier. 
um, and effectively will be offered you know, the price cap. So they, they will have already seen quite a significant jump from the cheaper tariff that they had probably diligently sought in the market to go up to the price cap. And you know, we'll see likely uh, further increases in April. Is there anything that we can be doing to try to keep our costs down right now? It seems that their prices are headed in one direction. The usual advice to shop around just doesn't work. Uh, you know, there are very few options for moving. How do we keep our bills down? The, the, the simple dynamic is, is purely to use less energy. And that's very, very difficult for customers like the one that you spoke to earlier, who are very, very conscious already about heating their homes. And, you know, we need to make sure that those customers are using things like the warm home discount to, you know, it, it, to effectively subsidise their energy bill. And there is some help available either directly through the government or actually many of the bigger energy suppliers have funds that they can help customers tap into to ease the pain of their energy bill. But for the rest of us, actually, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves. We're quite lazy about the way that we use energy. So leaving doors open, windows open, leaving appliances switched on, not using our heating timer systems to really reflect when we need the house to be warm. Um, so we need to get much, much more um, aware and conscious about when we use our energy, but also actually starting to to think about some longer term investments in our homes as well to make sure that they actually are well insulated and any heat that we do pump into the houses are, are, are you know are retained for as long as possible. Ellen it's good to have your thoughts this morning thanks for being with us Ellen Fraser there an energy analyst uh, on that increase in bills that we might see when that price cap is reviewed again in April now there are calls for it to be less than six months so that price cap reviewed more regularly so we don't see a big increase but nonetheless it seems bills are headed in one direction uh, so do get in touch with us if you are facing this right now maybe you've been in one of those firms that's gone bust and you've suddenly seen your bills go up or your prices rising all the details there on the screen do get in touch and we'll talk about that a little later. I'll see you soon. It's past eight, everything seems to be more expensive, doesn't it? Whether it's petrol or bills or energy costs. And Ben's been looking at the issue. You've got some figures for us this morning. Yes, and a warning that it could get worse before it gets better. Thanks very much, Ed. Morning to you. Uh, that warning that gas bills could uh, double uh, versus what we're paying this time last year. Uh, energy prices, of course, have been rising for months now. Last year, a typical annual dual fuel bill was just over £1,000. Uh, but you might remember the price cap. That is the upper limit that providers can charge you for your gas and electricity. Well, that went up by 12% in October. That meant that 15 million people saw their bill rise as a result. Now, a typical annual dual fuel bill is now around £1,200 every year. It is a record increase. And the bad news is that it probably won't end there. Ofgem is expected to raise the price cap again early next year. Now, we don't know exactly what that could mean for bills, but the charity National Energy Action, well, it's forecasting a £550 increase to the dual fuel cap. That's in April. That would mean that gas prices will have doubled in just 18 months. Now, we spoke a little earlier to Catherine, who's from West Yorkshire, and she says she has to decide whether she can afford to turn her heating on or find other ways to keep warm. I very, very rarely put the heating on, to be honest. Um, I've got blankets, I uh, use my hairdryer. So basically I'll wrap myself up in a blanket and I'll use my hairdryer to warm me up. Um, I'm very, very funny about putting the heating on because I just, it just, even when it's on, my anxiety levels are so high and I'm constantly like timing it to be like, when can I turn it off? How quickly will it, you know, last, you know, everything like that, it's just a nightmare. Yeah, just a nightmare and a lot of you getting in touch with us about that this morning too. Uh, so what is behind that massive rise in prices? Well, wholesale energy prices, that's what our suppliers pay for the gas and electricity they sell to us. Well, that has reached an all-time high. The wholesale gas price has gone up by 250% since January. Now, energy providers have inevitably been passing that cost on to us as customers. Now, usually at this point, and we've said it before, we would normally recommend that you shop around to find a cheaper deal on price comparison sites. But the problem is right now, there are very few of those deals available. And that is in part down to the fact that many smaller energy firms, the ones that were competing with cheaper prices, well, they've already gone bust. 20 firms have gone out of business so far this year. The latest was Zog Energy that collapsed yesterday. 
Well, the only real tip for people now, of course, is to keep your house well insulated and do what you can to use less energy. Maybe turn off the light, spend a bit less time in the shower, shorter and colder washing machine cycles. Among the tips we've been hearing this morning, uh, we've been asking you for your thoughts. But first, let's have a listen to what one energy expert told us a little earlier. Quite often the suppliers, the, the smaller suppliers in the market, are actually trying to grow market share by offering prices that were below the price cap. Now, unfortunately, in, in a market where the wholesale price is so high, those prices were unfortunately unsustainable for many of them, and those suppliers it, couldn't afford to continue and, and went bust. So that is the real problem for many energy firms now that were competing uh, and taking on some of the big providers. They've just found that prices have risen too much. They are not able to pass that on to us immediately because of that price cap. So it means that they have gone under. A lot of customers have been automatically being transferred to new providers. But if you are being transferred, you'll find that your bill probably goes up. If you're on a fixed rate deal before, that is not honoured by the new company. A lot of you getting in touch with us and it really shows just what impact these rises are having on people. Nigella has emailed us this morning saying, I rarely put the heating on. Occasionally I'll put it on for maybe 20 minutes, then take it straight off again. I might wear tights under my jeans, keep my coat on in the house, plus I wear a hot water bottle, she says. Occasionally I'll have a bath, but I worry about the cost of heating the water. Uh, John's got a different view, though. He says, look at what some people are paying for their phone or TV package right now. He says, put things in the right order, concentrate on what's important. He says he's happy to sit indoors with a coat on. I grew up, he says, when no one had central heating. Uh, and Carol from Cumbria, she says when her supply went bust, she was transferred to a new one, but bills have gone up so much, he says. Uh, she says, I'm 62, live alone, work full time. I'm out of the house between seven and five, Monday to Friday, but I just cannot understand how they can justify this rise. And many customers right now are really feeling the effects of that. The warning that it's going to get worse before it gets better with that £550 forecast to happen in April of next year, that's the increase in the price cap. So it's so many things going up in price right now, not least energy bills, so it might make things in the new year look a bit more expensive. And of course, the real problem is that pushes up inflation right across the board. We'll keep our eye on that. More for you.